Hey, this your boy Shell360. Welcome to Wake Up. What's going on folks? My followers, my my believers, you know, my vigilant people, my warriors, my soldiers, salute to y'all. Today we're gonna be talking about church, holidays, and law. Now I'm gonna start on holidays. Number one, there's nothing wrong with celebrating holidays, okay? Be talking about Easter, we're talking about Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, etc. etc. Holidays like that. That means something that brings the family together or has something to do with the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Um Easter, let's start with Easter. Number one, Easter has nothing to do with the Easter bunny and the egg. When D when Jesus died on the cross, there was no Easter bunny, there was no eggs laying around. Now, if anybody can find that in the Bible, um, show it to me. You know what I'm saying? I want to see it. I want to see where it says in the Bible when Jesus died on the cross and there was rabbits and eggs laying around. I don't even see a Bible verse even remotely close to that. So, that's number one. Okay, back to the story of Tammuz. So Tammuz, for 40 years, was a tremendous hunter, and he took the place of his father, ruling the world, and had tremendous power. But more than anything, he was a credible hunter. But unfortunately, his gift and his skill of hunting caught up with him one day because he was killed during his 40th year by a wild boar. And so what would happen is Semiramis, at some point after that, she died, and she was sent up into heaven, but apparently her deceased husband, Baal, was not ready for her. So he sent her back down into the uh, into, to earth in a giant egg, and it exploded in the Euphrates River, and the very first thing that she did when she came out of that egg was she turned a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. That's right. As crazy as it sounds, that's where we get our egg laying rabbit from. That's where we get the Easter bunny from. Now, before you go any further, you're thinking, well, an egg, she, this sounds like a fairy tale. Well, it's a Babylonian legend, but you have to understand Eastern culture back then. Even in Christmas, where does it say in the Bible, give me a Bible verse? And that's all I want. I don't want to hear anything else about your own opinions, your own perspective. I'm talking strictly in the Bible. Where does it tell you that the birth of Jesus Christ had to do anything with Santa Claus and his reindeers? Even a Christmas tree. You know what I'm saying? Tell me that. Tell me where did you get that from? Okay? See, this is what I'm trying to explain to y'all people. I'm trying to explain to you that these holidays are man-made worldly traditions Jeremiah 10 verses Two and following says, Thus says the Lord, or Yahweh, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven. 
For the Gentiles are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree down from the forest, the work of the hands of a workman with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. They are upright like a palm tree, and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Now, many people believe that this particular scripture is talking about Christmas trees themselves. The truth of the matter is this particular scripture is... This is the man of God. <laughs> this is God we talking about. And we talking about Santa Claus, reindeers, Easter bunnies, and magical aids, I guess. I don't celebrate, I don't like celebrating holidays. That's just me. I'm not a holiday person. I like Thanksgiving. I like I like celebrating the birth of Christ. I like celebrating the, the death and resurrection of Christ because it has so much meaning. Those two things. If it wasn't for Jesus, we won't be here today. I'm telling you, we've been extinct a long time. There's nothing wrong with celebrating holidays. It's just the fact that people put too much into it to make it seem, because like on Christmas, we talking about people spending money and they got bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? Now people behind on bills because they trying to make their Christmas better than last year you know what I'm saying and that's not really what it's all about you know I have no problem going to church going to church is very very important uh <clears throat> a lot of people think if they don't go to church or miss church you know they will go to hell and God will damn them and they should be ashamed of themselves um if you look in your Bibles and you go to Hebrews I would like to say chapter 10, verse 5, verse 25. I would like to say that. Matter of fact, the scripture should be coming up on the screen right now as we speak. Um, it basically tell you that do not abandon church, going to church. And there's nothing wrong with going to church. There's nothing wrong with missing a couple Sundays of church. Um, if you abandon church and just say, I don't want to go to church, that's one thing. You know, you, you really plan plan with your soul right there because you really need to go to church. You really need to be in the church. You need to be associating with other people. It doesn't matter who and how many times, it, you know, you need to be going. But if you miss some days of church, you're not going to be damned for that. God is not going to punish you. If you feel good enough to get up and go to church, then get up and go to church. God would not condemn you for that because even God rest well worked for six days and rested on the seventh day. You can check that out in the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put that up right there. Yeah. Um. He even rested. So on Sundays, if you don't go to church, that's fine. Okay, but don't abandon the church. And in Matthew, I think I think it's 18 verse 20. I should be putting it up there because I, I don't remember it. Um, it's, it, it basically tell you if there's two people or three people, I am with them. Meaning that it can be three people associating, talking about God, God and Jesus Christ. And God is there. When you're talking about God, when there's a group of people, five people, ten people, that's a church. That can be a church. It doesn't mean you have to be around thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Now... Would it be nice to be around thousands and thousands of people? Yes, the more the merrier. Would it be nice to be around millions and millions of people? Yes, the more the merrier. But in all reality, that is not going to happen. As a church, it can be groups of threes, groups of twenties, groups of thirties. As long as everybody is preaching and, 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 and spreading the gospel through the word. The law of the land. I'm gonna make this short and simple. The government is not your friend. 
the government is going to use you and eventually going to kill all of us okay that's the deal okay when it says about uh when it says um obey the laws of the land in the bible well yes obey the law of the land in the bible but let's not be stupid now let's not let's not forget the law of god either see we weren't about the law of the land but let's worry about the law of god because the law of god is way more way 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 more important than the law of the land because the law of the land contradicts his laws each and every time each every law every law is a contradiction because if it ain't if it ain't one thing it's another if you, if you ain't know this, okay so you know obey the law of the land but don't be stupid yes i'm a christian i have a relationship with jesus christ but i'm gonna keep it real and that's what god is real so you gotta be real it's about you six be vigilant be a warrior be a soldier Stand up for the Lord. God bless.